star Everybody thought he'd go real far But he didn't get a thing from the classes he took You know he just wasn't interested in his books Amy was the smartest girl at school Not very popular, not very cool Two kids will be chosen from Earth To go to school at Galaxy High Yep, strap in because it's about to get seriously 80s up in here. This tube is the most awesome goddamn force in the whole godless world. And woe is us if it ever falls into the hands of the wrong people. TV party tonight! TV party tonight! TV party tonight! TV party tonight! We're gonna have our TV party tonight! Con and welcome into the Idiot Box, where we take a look at television of the past and present and try to figure out where things went so horribly, horribly wrong. Saturday morning TV in the 80s was a bastion of creativity. It didn't seem to matter how bizarre or how strange or even, admittedly, how boring a concept was, there was always the possibility it could be picked up as an animated series. In fact, Saturday morning became so popular for the big networks that a lot of them would run preview shows the Friday night before the new season started in order to drum up interest in the expected hits. This meant that until the advent of Cartoon Network and Nicktoons, if you wanted brand new, never before seen, interesting cartoons, you had to go to the networks on Saturday morning. However, most of these shows failed to last longer than one season, but that doesn't necessarily mean they were terrible. And today we're going to take a look at one of those series. One that was in the perfect storm of creativity and wound up creating a cult hit. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Galaxy High School. Galaxy High has one of the most bizarre creation stories I've ever heard for a TV show. One which involves, amongst other things, a future hit Hollywood film director, a former filmation writer, an up-and-coming animator who would go on to create one of the best-loved cartoon series of the 90s, a major Japanese animation studio, and a former member of the Eagles. Yes, the Hotel California Eagles. Like I said, strap in, cause here we go. So, to begin with, Galaxy High was the initial brainchild of Sid Ewanter, the creative director of noted Japanese animation studio Tokyo Movie Shinza, or TMS. Ewanter hired a little-known animator named John Crick Faluzzi, who would later go on to create Ren and Stimpy, to draw the main characters for a one-page pitch for a show called High School 2525. When the show was picked up by CBS, the director of children's programming changed the title to Galaxy High School and convinced an up-and-coming writer named Chris Columbus to develop the show. Chris Columbus would go on to direct such movies as Adventures in Babysitting, Home Alone, Mrs. Doubtfire, and the first two Harry Potter films. After the show was developed, former filmation writer Larry DiTio was brought on as the script editor, and the theme song and incidental music for the show was composed by Don Felder, former guitarist for the Eagles. Now, despite this extremely convoluted origin story, figuring out who owns Galaxy High these days is actually pretty easy. TMS does. 
Which brings up an interesting point now that I think about it. Warning, the following statement is predicted to cause the heads of every weeaboo, otaku, manga freak, anime junkie, and pocky addict to explode in a fit of indignant nerd rage. If you feel you may be one of these people, please fast forward approximately 10 seconds. Since the show was originally conceived at TMS, the animation was produced by TMS. The majority of the staff are from the Japanese branches at TMS, and the copyrights are owned by TMS. That would mean that, technically, this American Saturday morning cartoon series is an anime. How dare you, sir! How dare you! How dare you say that Galaxy High is qualified as anime, is even compared to those glorious East animation things? What makes you have the right to say that it is Japanese animation just because it was animated in Japan. There are more qualifications that are required, you know. For one thing... Th well, that's not the point. The point is, is your audacity is infuriating to say such things. Uh, here I am, sitting at my computer, playing my DS, while blogging about how much I hate Dragon Ball Z Kai, and... I hear this! It just, it, it's so frustrating! I mean, the, the actors in it aren't even actors you hear in anime! There's no Johnny Young Boosh, there's no Kyle Hebert, there's no Vic McNurganoganog. You can't even, not that you should listen to the English stuff anyway, because the people at Funimation and Aniplex in America and Sentai Filmworks always ruin the gloriousness of anime. Including you, sir! How dare you, sir! You have made me so angry that to calm down, I have to go watch my favorite anime, High School of the Dead. Good day, sir! The setting of the series is, naturally, a high school in outer space. Much like any 80s cartoon series, the premise is set up in the opening sequence. Two Earth teenagers, Doyle Cleverlobe and Amy Brighttower, are selected to attend Galaxy High, a high school where aliens from every planet imaginable attend in the name of galactic goodwill. The first episode opens on Amy and Doyle's first day at Galaxy High, where things don't quite go as either of them expected. Look, before we go inside, I want to tell you something. Yes? I don't want you following me around, expecting me to show you the ropes. Following you around? Yeah, I can't let the alien girls get the wrong idea. But once they see an Earth boy, especially one as cool as me, I'll be more popular than I was on Earth. And I don't want you messing it up for me. You don't have to worry about me. I won't go anywhere near you. The two are met by six-armed class president, Milo Davinas. You get it? Milo gives the two of them a tour of the school, and we see that Doyle is... kind of a douche. Come on, let me give you a tour of our school. You know, Amy, maybe I was wrong. Maybe we humans should stick together. Oh, yeah? Uh-huh. And I was wondering, how would you like a date? Get serious. I am serious. Sure. Okay, that'd be fun. Good. Then you can go out with this. <laughs> I wouldn't be caught dead with you. <laughs> I'm stuck in the middle of outer space with a metal midget. Don't worry, Doyle's about to get a serious reality check. And it's gonna start right when they get their locker assignments. And these are your lockers. X234V9 and Z4229Q. Welcome, baby. I'm your personal locker. I'll carry your books, help you with your homework. I'll answer your every need. Thanks. 
Don't expect any special treatment from me. I ain't no slave. I've been doing this for 30 years, and I'm sick and tired of you rotten kids. You want to keep books inside of me? Fine. But that's it. No clothes, no food, nothing but books. Hey, and no smelly socks. That's one. Next up, they visit the gym. Speaking of which, uh, hey, hey, where the hell's the jam? I'm Jim. You're in luck. A girls' gym class is in progress. Girls? Gym class? All right! Introduce Doyle and Amy, our exchange students from Earth. <laughs> now, ladies, ladies, relax, cool down. Now, I know you've never seen an Earth boy before, but relax. There's enough of me for everybody. Now. <laughs> I thought the girls would go nuts over me. Are you kidding? The male population here outnumbers the females three to one. They're nothing special. That's two. And after this blow to Doyle's ego, we meet the three characters that are going to become Amy's friends throughout the series. Hi. We haven't met. I'm Bully Bubblehead. Who are you? Amy. Hi. I'm Bully Bubblehead. I know. H huh? H how do you know my name? You just told me. I did. You'll have to excuse Bowie. She's absent-minded. I, I, I'm not absent-minded. I, I may be forgetful, but I am not absent-minded. I'm Wendy. I've got this little black book with a description and rating of every single boy in this school. Hi, I'm Gil the Gossip, and I can tell you any secret you want to know. Billy Big Dipper says he's from Venus, but he's really from Saturn. And Clarence Comet is flunking algebra. And Martha Meteor is allergic to peanut butter. And hi, we haven't met. I'm Billy, Bubblehead. <laughs> no, your ears aren't playing tricks on you. Gilda is voiced by a pre-Bart Simpson Nancy Cartwright. In fact, if you'll let me get ahead of myself just a little bit, this show has one of the best voice casts I've ever heard. In addition to Nancy Cartwright, the cast also features veteran voice actor Susan Blue as Amy, Pat Fraley as, amongst others, Coach Frogface, John Stevenson, better known as the voice of Mr. Slate from the Flintstones as school bully Beef Bonk, Howard Morris as Professor Eisenstein and pizza parlor owner Luigi LaBouncey, and let's see if you can identify the voice of Galaxy High's principal, Ms. Biddy McBrain. Shoot, I don't know. Romeo Zone and Jupiterette. Next question. What old king had three conniving daughters? Still not quite sure? Here, maybe this will help. If he does kiss you before the sun sets on the third day, you'll remain human permanently. But if he doesn't, you turn back into a mermaid and you belong to me. Yep, Pat Carroll, the voice of Ursula the Sea Witch from The Little Mermaid. But back to Doyle and Amy's first day. After the gym, Milo takes them to homeroom, where they meet Ms. McBrain, and Doyle gets the final crushing blow to his ego. Well, I'm sure there are plans in the files for both of you. Let's take a look. Blackboard? We do have plans for these earthlings, big plans. Amy, because of your excellent grades, you are the recipient of our Galaxy High School Scholarship. <laughs> and to help you get your classes, a new Xenon X5000 Turbo Space Coupe DeVille. <gasps> wow! Hey, what about me? Yes, Doyle, we have something for you. Because of your incredibly poor record, your irresponsibility and laziness, you will have to take a part-time job at Luigi's Lunar Pizza Parlor. A part-time job? 
But why? To pay for your tuition. No scholarship? Did you hear that, folks? He wants a scholarship with those grades. <laughs> Get a spaceship? Oh, most certainly. We don't expect you to walk through the universe, Doyle. You are the recipient of a used 37-year-old Benson Hofflinger Model 1. Seven thousand. A skateboard? This isn't fair. If you did your schoolwork, Doyle, none of this would have happened. My God, a high school where academic effort is given higher priority than athletic prowess. Truly, this must be science fiction. I want to go back to Earth. I'm afraid that is impossible. Impossible? Why? Because Galaxy High School is your last chance to graduate. So, with no choice but to stick with Galaxy High and automatically branded an irresponsible loser, Doyle bitches and moans in the hall, and then has his own personal close encounter. He's mean! Nasty! I'd give anything to see a friendly face. Just one friendly face. Well, hi. What a cute little doggy. Aren't you cute? No, class. To make ice scream, you take the ice and squeeze it. Sludge. He loves earthlings, if they're properly salted, that is. Well, what's he doing in here? Sludge is the school janitor. A dog? A janitor? Sure. He can do anything. Show him, Sludge. Electrical work, painting, plumbing. Sludge, I, I, I think it goes the other way. <laughs> At lunch, Amy finds herself gaining another admirer, appropriately named the Creep. And Milo has glommed onto Doyle, and... Oh, I'm the Creep from the planet Sarabeek. Your heart belongs to me, ah. At night when you're asleep, into your spaceship I will creep. Buzz on, Creep. <laughs> no, it's okay. He's kind of cute. Cute? How she said I'm cute, that was me. Amy, you shouldn't have said that. Why not? You're gonna be my new best friend, and I'm never gonna leave your side. Never, not once, not even forget it. No, not... We're attached? That's the idea. Oh, come on. Biff, unlock this thing. No, if I were to do that, uh, we wouldn't uh, not we wouldn't be together for 24 hours a day. But I don't want to be together 24 hours a day. Uh, but, but, but I, <laughs> I do, and, and only I know the combination. Why do you think we call him the creep? And Doyle makes the mistake of trying to make friends with the school bullies, Rotten Roland, Earl Ech, and their leader, Beef Bonk, collectively known as the Bonk Bunch. <laughs> Hi, guys. I'm Doyle Cleverlobe from Planet Earth. Oh! Hey, pal! Watch where you sit! Earth stinks. Oh, yeah? Hey, put me down! So Milo hurries Doyle to Professor Eisenstein's lab, and they manage to turn Doyle back to his normal self. After that, the school day comes to an end. Doyle and Milo head off to work at Luigi's, while the girls take Amy style shopping, which is just a fancy term for a makeover. And fortunately, she manages to become disconnected from the creep in the process. Later at the pizza parlor, Beef tries to make time with Amy, but Doyle intercedes. 
And thanks to a suggestion from Roland and Earl, Beef challenges Doyle to a game of Zuggle Ball. Hey, Beef, why not challenge him to a game of Zuggle Ball? Yeah, then you can humiliate him in front of the whole school. Don't you just love it? <laughs> Tomorrow, after school, the gym, me and you, Zuggle Ball. Zuggle Ball? I think on Earth you call it hooky. Well, that's hockey. Yes, only the puck is alive. And the tension is high at Galaxy High. It's Doyle versus Beef. And the question on everyone's lips, Riggit. who will score the three points that win the game? Riggit. And the heart of the whole school. Win this game and you're in. But watch out for Beef, he's a dirty player. Doyle scores the first point easily, but Beef knocks him out of his skates and scores a point of his own. Later on, the score is all tied up. And with 15 seconds to go, here comes the tiebreaker. Where was you, Doyle? You're history, yes, boy. Let's see you win this now. Doyle, please! I'm gonna get that earth back. And so Doyle's learned a lesson in humility and tries to mend fences with Amy. Hi, Amy. Hi, Doyle. You were terrific. Thanks. It looks like you're a big man on campus again. Well, not really. I'm still gonna have to keep proving myself. You sure will. Say, listen, Amy. Maybe the two of us could become friends. Sure, Doyle. What are you doing Friday night? No plans. How would you like a date? Oh, well, Amy, I could. Yeah, that'd be fun. Good. Then you can go out with Gilda Gossip. <laughs> <laughs> How about a kiss, Earth Boy? I'll, uh, I'll get you for this, Amy. There is a lot to like about this series. The inversion of the standard nerd and jock tropes was pretty revolutionary for the mid-80s. And as time went on, we actually got to know quite a bit about all the characters on the show. But really, the standout of the show has to be the animation. There's very few errors, and there's always something interesting to look at. In fact, the quality of animation was highly unusual for mid-80s TV, which pretty much did everything on the cheap, even for the more polished Saturday morning market. Now, I realize this review hasn't exactly been funny, but that's because, honestly, there's not a lot to make fun of in this series. Everything pretty much fires on all cylinders all the time. The characters are interesting, the stories are fun, the voice cast is excellent, and the animation is gorgeous. Sadly, it might have been a little ahead of its time. While CBS did make room in its schedule for the show in the 1987-88 season, the show did not get renewed, and the network made do with rerunning the existing episodes. Since its cancellation, Galaxy High has cropped up in syndication a few times, most notably on the Sci-Fi Channel in 1996. A few years ago, Media Blasters released the entire series across two DVDs under their Anime Works imprint. These ran about seven bucks a piece, although there is now a complete series set which runs about 13, so you can save a dollar. Also, if you have either an Amazon Instant Video or a Crunchyroll account, the entire series is available there for you to check out and enjoy. If you're a fan of great animation with superb voice casting and pretty decent stories, or even if you're just a fan of 80s cartoons in general, I recommend you give Galaxy High a watch. You'll have fun. I'm Dubious Khan. Join me next time for another trip into the Idiot Box. There's ponies on my wall.
Hopefully my mom doesn't mind me borrowing her glasses. I just, I want it to look as not me as possible, so. It's, as pathetic as I possibly gives you the right to think that just because it was animated over in Japan it qualifies as Japanese animation there are other qualifications required you know like for example well it's not the point all right the point is is that you have the audacity you have the gall to even compare them and while we're on the subject why would uh, I was, on, I was on such a roll. How dare you, sir? How, how dare you? How dare you even compare Galaxy High to the glorious East ja Japan thing? Uh, damn it. What makes you even think that it's okay to do something like this? It doesn't even make any sense. All the actors in it are like Canadian and stuff from stuff you see from American animation. You don't see Johnny Young Boosh, or Kyle Hebert, or Vic Miganerganog, or any of them in the voice cast. You have made me so angry, sir, that you sullied the glory and the sophistication of Japanese animation that to calm down, I'm gonna have to go watch my favorite anime, High School of the Dead. Good day, sir.